with the intention this year to really involve the tight ends in the red zone? You, four you know, any time that you're in the red zone and you have the ability to do some of the things off play action, uh, certainly you're going to uh, utilize some of the tight ends in the red zone. And and it just kind of worked out this past week and in previous weeks that uh, uh, they've been the ones getting the ball. So. Um, you know, it's it's utilizing the abilities of everybody on our football team that that's kind of creating those opportunities for the tight ends. How close or far away would you say Dante Cephas is from making a bigger impact? Yeah, you know, it's it's I kind of felt for Dante this past week. I know he had an opportunity on the scramble, and um, I still have a ton of belief in Dante, and he's had a great week of preparation. And I'm looking forward to seeing him bounce back this this upcoming week. You know, it's sometimes expectations uh, aren't met with reality, if that makes sense. And you know, it's it's okay. Here's this kid who's this, this, and this. And uh, um, you know, I I think he's had a really good week of practice this week. I've really liked his attitude, and uh, and I'm excited for him to continue to grow. But I know there's more in him. He knows there's more in him. And, uh, and he's going to be a big part of this offense moving forward. What does BYU do well defensively? Um, well, number one, I think they're extremely physical and they're extremely well coached. You know, you look at the amount of guys that they rotate throughout their defense. Um, they play fast. Uh, you know, I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to quote the head coach from Wyoming of what he said about them, but, but uh, you, you can see how big and how physical they are, how well they get off blocks. They don't misfit things. Um, they're very sound in coverage in the back end. You know, I think some of the things that they do in their third down package um, from pressures and from simulated pressures, they, they certainly can cause you some issue. So, um, and, and then they rotate guys and, and good on them. You know, I, I saw it and you see it on film that they have about 20 guys who have pretty significant reps throughout their entire defense. And with the exception of maybe one guy, uh, number zero, um, you know, they're going to rotate the guys through. And, and I think what I've seen is they want to keep 92 on the field, but they also want him fresh uh, because he's a, uh, an extremely good disruptive football player. BYU, uh, I think, likes to blitz from a lot of different places. It's mm -hmm. not just, I, I think, the same one or two ways that they blitz. Mm -hmm. uh, what challenges does it present when, you know, they, they stack the box like that and can yeah. sort of blitz from anywhere? Yeah, the, the one thing that they do a good job of is they do a good job of disguising where that pressure is coming from. There's some teams that you can look at and you can get some really good tells on, hey, the pressure is going to be coming here, the pressure is going to be coming here. And, and, you know, we look at all those things throughout the week and as soon as you feel like you've got a pretty good idea of what their tell might be, then there's two other clips that say, no, that's not it. So credit them and their defensive um, game planners for how they mix it up and how, and, and then ultimately what they do in the back end with a lot of their pressures as well. The multitude of, of having both zone and man answers and the multitude of doing some things where they're playing middle of the field, open middle of the field, close with some of those blitz patterns. I, it, it's going to create a big issue. Where's Avery at in his pre-snap reading of the defense doing? Growing continuing to grow and I think he'd be the first to admit that he's still a 19 year old kid but he is seeing things so much better and progressing through things so much better he's seeing you know to that same point some things that he has to do with protections and then obviously knowing if protections aren't turned a particular way where that free hitter is coming from he's getting such a better better feel for it and what it does is it guys it comes down to in my estimation getting those repetitions and what I like to call an uncontrolled environment. You know, an uncontrolled environment is you're not wearing a green practice jersey. You know, you can get hit. You know, you don't have a script. You don't know exactly maybe what that defense is running that particular day. <clears throat> so with each rep that he is getting, um, I just I see him continue to grow and continue to improve throughout the week. But I still, I still will admit on it too, Fitzy, that and he would say the same thing that there's still a lot of growth out there, and that, that that's exciting. For the first time this year, probably. How's mm -hmm. it look when you simulated that this week? You know, we did a real good job on Tuesday. Um, yesterday, there's there's a little bit of some breakdowns, and we're really trying to crank it up on those guys to control, or, or to at least um, 
get a feel for what that noise is going to be. You know as well as I do, we've played in some loud environments over the course of the year, and there's really no way that you can truly simulate it. And we have some fresh faces out there. So we know that there may be a mistake. And we talked this morning as an offensive staff, when that mistake is made, we can't allow it to compound. You know, Coach Anderson went and found some clips. I believe it was two, 2022, BYU was playing Arizona State, night game, same atmosphere. Um, I believe Arizona State may have even been ranked at that particular time. Um, I, don't quote me on that. Uh, but, you know, Arizona State had six or six or eight procedure calls, and they had, I think, three or four of them in a row. So it's, it's okay if a mistake does happen, and we're doing everything in our power to make sure it doesn't, uh, but we still have 11 humans in there. And uh, just making sure that we're able to move on, we're able to, uh, um, to learn from it, and uh, move past it. We asked uh, Avery what he thought the offense did better last week. He started off by saying he thought you, your play calling was much more aggressive and he liked it. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think that uh, means to you when your quarterback says something like well, that? Well, it, I appreciate the show of confidence in it, and, and it's vice versa. You know, I, I, again, I think that he's, he's doing a much better job of seeing things, but then, and you guys see it, he's making off schedule plays as well. And earlier we talked about the throw that he made to Dante Cephas, unfortunately. Um, we weren't able to convert in that situation. Uh, but, uh, um, you know, he's playing within the system, but then he's also not panicking. It allows you to be a little bit more aggressive. We were much better on third downs and staying on the football field. In some situations, I know the first series and the second half, I was, I was disappointed with. You know, you look at kind of our last series um, uh, where we had a holding penalty and and kind of got backed up. We're really trying to just take time off of the clock, not put anybody in a situation. But uh, our, our ability to convert and stay on the field on third down allows a little bit more of those aggressive calls to come out.